you guys welcome back to the channel now this is a car that is very reminiscent for me so i have behind me the volkswagen mark 8 golf r now back in the day i used to drive a volkswagen i was one of those seeing kids i had a mark 4 golf 1.4 never quite graduated to the gti or the r but the last couple of iterations that i've driven of the r model i've been really really impressed with so we're coming around to the fifth version now which is the mark 8 there's a few things I want to talk to you guys about it, but you know what? After everything that I've seen online, I mean, this has been surprising a lot of people all over the place with its speed and agility. So I wanted to take a look for myself. So as usual, I'm going to let you guys enjoy the view and then we'll get into it. the brand new Volkswagen Mark 8 Golf R. Now I really have to emphasize the R on that because being from the Midlands I saw that Matt Watson also struggled a little bit with this. You really have to get your get 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 your head around that. Golf R. First impressions it's a golf. It looks it's got all of the DNA of a golf but I'm just not seeing anything that really makes it special. You have to pick it out. It's very subtle that this is a Golf R. I mean coming around the front you have this aggressive new front bumper but i don't think it's that aggressive um, and you have the little motorsport splitter down here as well now i do like the way the lights uh, you know come together to form this sort of tron front bar at the front here you've got your little r badges i don't know first impressions i walk around it and i'm like yep it's a family car i'm um, one thing about this is as well before you used to be able to get a two door you can now only get it in the four door I would prefer the three door, not going to lie. With a hatch, I do like two doors and a boot. Matte chrome wing mirror casings. Again, I would have probably gone for gloss black with that, but that is part of your R DNA there. 18 inch wheels. You've also got the blue R calipers that comes with that. Coming around to the rear, you have your black diffuser, which apparently is good for downforce. I don't know, lads. I don't know about that. Probably is. I'm not an engineer, but still, I didn't think it was that extravagant. Coming down to the quad tailpipes, the R badge is moved to just underneath the hatch pull here. Um, again, don't know how I feel about that. I would have preferred it probably on the side. Funny story about these. I remember when these came out, these hatch pulls are on the Mark V Golfs, and I had a Mark IV. And all I wanted to do was find a tailgate in a scrapyard to get this bit cut out and welded onto the back of my Mark IV because it was the mod of the day. It didn't end up actually happening. I ended up just doing a rear boot lid delete uh, and had a solenoid popper on my windscreen stalk. Windscreen stalk? Oh, no, my indicator stalk that never really used to work so I couldn't really open my boot on my car. Anyway, Volkswagen modifying days are behind me. Here we have the boot, slightly smaller than the Golf because uh, of the four wheel drive, four motion system. Only slightly though, I mean, it's, it's still a fairly reasonably sized boot. Ooh, those lovely blue headrests, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, I mean, as I said, it's got a rear spoiler here, but you can get the Kevit Up pack, which is the R Performance pack where you get the 19s, you get the bigger little uh, spoiler there. Uh, you also get the drift and Nürburgring mode. Again, drift mode in a four wheel drive car. Again, I never really know how I feel about that. And then what was the other thing that you get with it as well? Ah, yeah, you get it unlimited um, as well. But again, I just think it needs just a little bit more spice to tell me that this is the performance version of this vehicle. Let's have a look inside. I do actually really like the color. Lapis blue, it's really lovely in the sunlight. I really feel like Shmi would probably spec a car like this. It's very blue. There's blue on the cloth here. There's blue on the, on the stitching. There's blue, there's blue accents everywhere, including on the headrest and on the back of the seat here. <sighs> I don't know, I don't know. I mean, congratulations on continuing on a theme. It was going for blue for R, but I just think it could have been done slightly more subtly and I don't really like the material on the seats here. But, do you know, as I said, this is a more affordable version of a hatchback. This one currently sitting on the road price is 42,000 quid. 
at they start at 39 so i mean actually i'd say they're definitely creeping up in price all the time coming into here into the dashboard and drivers section uh i have a lot to say about this now and explain more when i'm driving but you know what i'm like i like buttons i like to be able to have an actual gear shifter so when i topped in and i actually thought for a second i was like oh is that the key oh they've already left it in it for me no it's not that's the shifter very odd you have no buttons other than these little touch screeny ones up here um, to help you with things you have four buttons here but they're sort of uh, you know your lane assist your climate your mode you got your driving mode here and your um, sensors and then just start start parking and auto hold all your brakes and stuff don't like it guys I don't like being able to just turn the volume down that really winds me up and these uh, buttons on the steering wheel you do have your R button here which you can change your mode uh, you know you can change your mode into the R race mode very easy to catch these very easy uh, but I'll explain more when I'm driving overall steering wheel is rather nice it fits really nice in your hand but very easy to squish the buttons or non buttons hurt uh, there got your nice little R more blue very shmi spec in here i'd be i would be surprised if he isn't buying one to be honest it's it's uh it's very him anyway so my overall impressions oh and as i said one thing that kind of put me off as well was the fact that you can only get this in three colors blue white and black i mean i'd have to go for a black one but overall i really like it it's very spacious and very comfortable but i just for me would have to go for the kevit up pack uh, you know maybe do a few little bits extra aftermarket but again you know I always say this I'm glad that it's not absolutely perfect out the box because it's keeping the aftermarket uh, industry alive so let's take her out for a run because to be honest forget all of that stuff you can change the bits and bobs which are personal taste it's the way it drives like you're on rails okay let's jump in now i will say the car is very comfortable you know if you're doing lots of miles it's a very cushy comfortable place um i like to sit quite low in the car again i don't know if this is back to the stance days but this is kind of like my perfect drive height right here so i need to talk to you guys about the reasons why i slightly dislike this car but also really love it at the same time this whole situation in the middle with the buttons and the little strange key fob gear selector. Why can't we just have a proper gear shifter? Look, I know it's automatic, which by the way, difference to the predecessor before, this car only comes in automatic. So those manual boxes, which were actually really quite fun in the Mark 7, you can't have that anymore. So I at least thought that they would have made, right, now everything's turning how do i turn the climate control down i've had this car for four days now and i still don't know how to quickly turn down the climate control it's really at times kind of wound me up because i would be doing something i might be i actually was uh, grabbing a coffee the other day from starbucks and i couldn't figure out how to turn the, the, the volume down really quickly but again these are all things that i'm sure that you would learn and get used to but for me personally it was something that really kind of put me off i just don't think the interface is that user friendly but other people may be better at it we've got apple carplay in here so again actual infotainment systems in cars if you've got apple carplay i don't even really look is that really bad i just don't bother going through all of the menus you've got your google maps you've got your spotify you've got your phone integration all there it's grand so let's go we're gonna pick our little r mode here oh you've got comfort sport race and individual that's your different driving modes we're gonna pop it into r because we're gonna take her for a good old spin <laughs> This is the joys of my job, creeping around um, quiet industrial estates with cameras on weekends. So, uh oh. Oh no, I thought someone had just closed the gate on me then. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Lots of people have ways of measuring how fast a car is. People do drag races, people do zero to sixties, that type of thing. But personally, I live right next to a Starbucks drive through on the A46 and the runoff to get back onto the A46 from the Starbucks is 
pretty sure. So you've got to do a pretty fast sprint from leaving the Starbucks to getting up to speed um, on back onto the carriageway. Trust me guys, nothing is able to beat this from zero to 70 miles an hour. I absolutely nailed it out of Starbucks, got up to speed, and I just absolutely blew everybody away. I kind of actually believe how fast this car really is. I mean, I know Archie did a drag race with it and it won. It also came up on Matt Watson's video that it was actually less than 4.7 seconds, zero to 62. It was four seconds that it showed there. It is such a nippy little car. Let's get the stats out of the way whilst we're at this crossroads. This has got the two liter inline force and a turbocharged engine. And that's pushing out 320 brake horsepower with 420 newton meters of torque. Now, couple that with the seven speed DSG gearbox and the four motion four wheel drive system. And you have a recipe for a really, really nippy little bugger, as people would say in the Midlands. I have been driving us around these roads and I'm having lots of fun. Like the acceleration is insane and the brakes are incredible. You've got serious stopping power. I really believe that this car would be would come alive on a track, but as we all know at the at this moment in time, it is not something that we're able to do. And also for you guys watching at home, you'd just be like me. You'd want to buy one of these things to just have fun on some B roads, you know, maybe go out for a quick over the hills jaunt in it overall driving experience i've been really really impressed if it wasn't for the few niggly things that really put me off this car i would have one of these in a heartbeat genuinely even though the price point was a little bit more than i thought it would be um this car actually being on the road at forty two thousand pounds i've enjoyed the driving experience that much that i was trying to love it i was like maybe this is the answer maybe this is where we're going to go next with the last car that they brought out in the R-Line, they promised that the 4Motion system had been upgraded, made better. Again, they've done the same with this. With It's actually got torque vectoring, which is through the R-Performance upgrade. I don't know the exact details on it, but all I can tell you is when you're going into a corner, it gives you serious, serious confidence. This thing feels like it's on rails. I was going through a couple of these S-Bends earlier, and you can really put some speed into it and it handles incredibly well it feels planted it feels solid you know you can never really you can never really go wrong with german engineering i always think they tend to make very solid cars volkswagen definitely being one of them squeezing on the accelerator coming into the bends here and you're just guiding it round and you can really feel the way it's pushing the torque to the outside wheels and yeah i'm i mean it's so confidence inspiring I would love to take this onto something that the Stelvio Pass or just, you know, something with lots of winding bends in it because it would just be so much fun. interface 
not very user friendly and with there being nothing down here do you know the one thing that really got to me i turn the automatic stop start off in every car that i get into i don't i just don't like it and it took me at least five or six minutes to find it and do you know when you get into something and you try you know you're at the traffic lights and you're oh, bollocks i just want to turn that off i just couldn't find it so i was then in a situation where i was like be like trying to get on a drive and I just oh I had to scroll through menus and this and that whereas normally it's just a button that you can hit and then that sorts it out unfortunately there's just a few too many things for me to want to invest in one of these but I cannot fault the driving experience it is a great great fun car to drive and uh, yeah if you're looking for a b-road killer this is definitely one right here guys the brand new mark 8 golf r what do i think of it i think it's an incredibly nimble and agile car so much fun to drive personally there's just a few too many things that i would really struggle with on the daily but again that's a totally personal preference i haven't had this much fun driving in a volkswagen in a very very long time so it was really really good fun to get behind the wheel of one again what do you guys think would you go for one of these let me know in the comments but other than that, that's it for this week. Take care of yourselves, guys. Thanks so much. I will see you super duper soon. Bye.